Okay guys, in this uh, video we will look at the main differences between on-grid, off-grid and hybrid systems. Uh, those three systems are the main kinds of solar systems you can have. And uh, there are some really important differences that we will look at in this video to give you an overview. So let's start and we're going to start with uh, on-grid systems. So on-grid systems, they are the most common type, uh, absolutely, all over the world. Uh, this is the most common type of solar for homes. Um, and why is that? It's because uh, they can then use the grid when it's not providing enough energy. So it's working seamlessly with the grid and is connected to, to the grid at all times. So. Obviously, then uh, there is a downside, and that is that uh, when uh, there is a power cut or when there is a problem on the grid, then actually this kind of system will shut down. And that is because in an on-grid inverter, there is no separate circuit for when you have a power cut. Because you cannot have electricity in a house that's connected to the grid, on a circuit that is also on the grid. That doesn't work. If you had that, you could kill workers trying to fix things on the grid. So that's why when we come to battery systems, one of the features of battery systems is that um, they have a separate circuit that is giving power from the battery and it's completely separate from, from the grid when there is a power cut. So that's why on-grid inverters, they do not give power when there is a power cut. So that's really important uh, to understand. The advantage is also in its limitation. It is very cost-effective because it's simple. There is no circuit for off-grid usage for when the power is down, when there are power cuts. It's simple setup. The inverter is simple. The technology, even though it's very, very useful and modern, it's not an expensive technology. It works, can work for years and years and years without having any difficulties. It, because of that, it's extremely useful and cost, uh, cost effective. And also maintenance very low. So the counterpart is off-grid systems. And here, let's see, um, see I'm covering up here a little bit, so I can do like this. And here we need more of everything basically, because now you don't have support from the grid anymore. So you need more panels, bigger battery, and bigger inverter, because there's no alternative source of energy. You could have a generator, but that's sort of outside of the solar system. But it's definitely sometimes a good idea to have a generator as a backup for an off-grid system. Or at least oversize the battery bank so that you are sure that you have enough batteries uh, for some off-grid uh, engineers. They, they actually recommend you have to have battery for three days. I think that may be a little bit overkill because... Obviously, as a user, you can adjust your load when uh, you have uh, rainy days or, you know, rainy season or limited power from the sun. Then, of course, you can be flexible as a home user. As a business owner, it's a different uh, ball game. You do not have the option to be flexible, probably. So then it's much more important to have that extra either battery backup and uh, or generator backup. Um, so that, that's definitely a very big difference here in regards to business and home. And of course you might be doing something that uh, makes you not flexible. So then you have to have a lot more batteries and uh, a generator maybe. So, and you also have to think about inverter size because the inverter has to be able to provide the power that you are using on the peak times. 
if it's too small, then you have to change something about either the appliances or how you are using uh, your electricity. So, you know, that is why off-grid can get quite expensive if you want uh, a very, you know, the luxuries of uh, all the normal appliances. But there are many new technologies now that are using energy in a different way. For example, for water heating, you don't have to use water heating that uses 8,000 watts, you know, for the bathroom, for example. You can use tanks and setups that are more friendly in combination with uh, the solar systems. So there's more planning uh, when you go off grid for sure. And four is that uh, because of all these things, uh, it's more expensive. So definitely. Um, so the benefit is obviously that you have independence. You're not relying on the grid. You're not really relying on the government. You are completely in independent. So, and that also, of course, uh, in regards to whatever happens on the grid, you are not affected by that. And also, of course, that when you are completely producing your own energy, uh, you are not using any coal generated energy or anything like that. So it's good energy. Hybrid solar systems is a mix of uh, these two things. Uh, you are gr grid connected, you are on grid, but you also have battery backup. So when there is a power cut, you have uh, power. And that's what we call the UPS circuit. So it's a separate circuit, a separate panel that gives power from the battery that's not co connected to the grid at all. So it's completely safe and, and good. Um, it's not as expensive as off-grid because in normal situations when the grid is up you can still use, use the grid. So that means that it's not as expensive as off-grid. So hybrid is a very cool uh, combination. So of course what is correct for you, that depends on many things. For cost is definitely on grid, that is the lowest cost. If it's important to have battery backup power, you have to be either off grid or, or with a hybrid solution with batteries. Off grid systems are actually incredibly stable. We have installed uh, quite, quite a few of them and it's unbelievable how stable it is. So. If you have a completely off-grid system with a, with a good battery solar system, you're going to have very, very reliable electricity as long as you have enough panels and enough batteries for what you want. So, so let's summarize. So we have three main systems, on-grid, off-grid and hybrid. For on-grid and hybrid, you don't really have to think about the exact load that you have, meaning that you don't really have to think exactly how much electricity that you are using, because if you don't have enough from the solar, you can use the grid. So you don't have to like, oh, can I use those things, or maybe I need a solar system that's bigger. And Yes, you have to think about sizing, but not in terms of if your solar can run your appliances, not it's in terms of how much do you want to save. That's really what should determine the sizing in on-grid and hybrid situations, not uh, what the system can run independently, because that's only ne necessary to specify when you're off-grid. So there's no such thing as what can the solar run. In, in on-grid and hybrid, you don't have to think about that. If it doesn't have enough, it takes from the grid. So for off-grid, the counter is that you must calculate completely. If you do not, you will get the wrong system. And this happens a lot uh, if you don't calculate, if you don't know what appliances you have, how much they are using, then you don't uh, get the system that you need. So. So, one important misunderstanding that I often uh, run into is that people want to use the grid as a backup 
that's the wrong thinking because the grid ha if you are going to be on grid either with an on grid system or with a battery hybrid system your grid has to be most of the time okay if it's not then you have to fix that and the reason is because when uh, the volt is bad or something like that the solar system will shut down or go to ups and a hybrid solar system is not meant to be on the ups for months and months if you want to do like that then you have to make an off-grid system so that is why that it's wrong to think of the grid as a backup for a solar system don't don't think like that because if you are on the grid the grid has to be good if it's not it has to be fixed okay to fix it there are many different ways you can fix it depends what the problem is obviously uh, you can fix it with a volt regulator or maybe the transformer is undersized or the cable is too small but if it's not giving the proper electricity then this must be fixed um, so regarding hybrid systems it's only when you have a power cut that you have to think about what appliances that you can run you know so we we say we have to design the ups that's uh, what i do that's my job or one one of the jobs that i do is to design the ups for a customer and that we have to do long time before the installation because that has to do with what kind of system that you need for for your goals so that's all part of the configuration and the setup of the system design we call it so but that's only for the power cuts in normal situations hybrid systems you can use the grid so that is really the point that i want to underline in this presentation so obviously when we talk about the design and uh, the configuration that is correct for you then obviously we can help with that that's what we do uh, as a solar company especially for the design i am the guy who's designing all the systems but uh, we do it also with the technical help of suppliers and electricians in the company okay guys that's it for now